write the next comic up. I hope you enjoy him. He goes around the city. He's on Caroline's, Gotham. Please welcome right now, Bill Sella, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Laura. How's everybody doing? I'm Bill Sell. I don't know if anybody here recognizes me, but I've uh, done a lot of uh, extra work recently. <laughs> movies and uh, television. I even got to be an extra on The Sopranos last season, which was quite a thrill. I got to uh, sit at the bar at the Bada Bing Club and pretend to drink alcohol and look at topless girls for like four hours. It was quite a stretch for me. <laughs> Brilliant performance. And when the shoot was done, they told me the compensation was going to be $75. I thought that was fair, so I paid them. <laughs> Speaking of uh, television, uh, anybody see these commercials for Doggy Steps? It's an actual little staircase for the dogs. If they have short legs up and jump up on the bed of the couch. You know, if I wanted my uh, dog on the bed of the couch, I would have gotten a dog with longer legs in the first place. <laughs> I'm kidding. I have a Yorkshire Terrier. I love him. I spoil him rotten. In fact, he's so spoiled, uh, he wouldn't even use doggy steps. He's holding out for a doggy escalator. <laughs> yeah, his name is Oliver, and uh, like I said, he's a Yorkshire Terrier. And like most descendants from England, he really loves to drink beer. <laughs> and if I'm drinking a beer, i got to pour some O'Doul's into his water dish, or he won't let me drink in peace. It's got to be O'Doul's, he's underage. <laughs> and if uh, I'm out drinking beer like I am tonight, and I come home, he insists on French kissing me for like ten minutes. Ugh. I'm kidding. I'm the one who insists. Uh, he doesn't seem to mind. Anyway. Speaking of commercials, I'm sure you're all sick of these uh, prescription drug ads that list like a hundred horrible side effects and ten times worse than what you have in the first place. But I'll share this with you anyway. For nighttime sleep aid, I'm not going to mention the name, I don't need a lawsuit. But it's a nighttime sleep aid, and one of the side effects is possible sleeplessness. <laughs> sleeplessness. You know, I already have that side effect. That's why I'm taking, so I'm taking the fucking pill in the first place. <laughs> it's like taking Viagra and finding out one of the side effects is an extremely soft penis. <laughs> I already have that. <laughs> I'm just kidding again, you know. I've never taken Viagra myself, but my grandfather, he took it until he was 86 years old, God bless him. Now, he wasn't still sexually active, he just really enjoyed walking around with a heart on <laughs> You know, unfortunately, he stopped taking a few years before he died, or he could have played horseshoes at the wake. <laughs> you know, he probably still could have, he looked pretty stiff to me. I guess uh, rigor mortis is nature is Viagra. But my grandfather was quite a character. Actually, he really was sexually active at age 86, I just didn't think you guys would believe that. Yeah, he used to have hookers come over to the house like two or three times a week. And I thought this was really disrespectful to my grandmother's memory. I mean, she was still alive, she just couldn't remember that the hookers were there. <laughs> Thank you. Now, the phrase, the phrase dirty old man really didn't do him justice, because based on the stories he would tell us, he was pretty much a dirty young man, too. Remember the times around the holidays, he would gather the grandchildren around and proudly tell us all about the time that, as a young man, he gave himself a blowjob. <laughs> Needless to say, I was mortified. Mortified that this particular trait doesn't run in the family. <laughs> the gray hair, I got that. <laughs> the ability to suck my own dick now. <laughs> Thankfully, I don't need to do that to myself anyway. I'm sure you all can tell. I can get a blowjob anytime I like. All I need to do is pull all duels on my crotch and I'm all set. <laughs> And I was driving by a school the other day, and I saw this sign that said, uh, speed limit, 25 miles an hour when children are present. Now, how the fuck do I know if children are present? Should I run in and take attendance? And if they are present, who decided 25 miles an hour is an acceptable speed for a child to be run over? <laughs> you know, I realize 27 miles an hour, they could be killed. 25 miles an hour, the car just bounces off. <laughs> The kids are fat today, but it's got to hurt a little. Another <laughs> sign I saw by the same school said, uh, drug-free school zone. These kids have it pretty good. When I went to school, I had to pay for my drugs. <laughs> but I guess the uh, free drugs help when these uh, kids are hit by the slow-moving cars. <laughs> but it does have to be tough going to school these days. They got a lot of stuff that happens now that doesn't happen, you know, when I was a kid. You have teachers molesting the students. 
All right, that's something I might have enjoyed, but it's probably not for everyone. You have school shootings, gang violence. You know, I guess those wedgies I used to get freshman year weren't so bad after all. And uh, once I stopped wearing underwear, well, the homeroom teacher had no choice but to stop giving them to me. <laughs> anyway, I was dating a girl a while back, and uh, I should have known it wasn't going to work out. I met her on Match.com, and uh, on her profile it said her favorite hobby was reading biographies of famous people. You know, as opposed to what? All those best-selling biographies of unknown people? <laughs> But I went out with her anyway, and uh, one night she brought over a bottle of wine for us to have at dinner. It had a screw-off cap. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not a wine snob, but she had the nerve to suggest that we should open it and let it breathe a while before we drink it. I said, this wine's not going to breathe. This wine's going to gasp for air. <laughs> yeah, she said she brought it over special in case I didn't have a corkscrew. Now, excuse me, what kind of a functioning alcoholic would I be if I didn't have a corkscrew? <laughs> I was insulted. I was even more insulted when she said she also brought over her vibrator in case I didn't have an erection. I'll have you good people know, I always have an erection. Well, it don't look like this minute I'm having now. I could, but I found a pill that takes care of that problem. Yeah, it does the exact opposite of Viagra. It's called Niagara. Let me show you how it works. Don't really use my finger, I don't want to knock anybody's eye out here. Viagra rises. Niagara falls. <laughs> now I know why so many newlyweds want a honeymoon of my penis. <laughs> I just hope they don't try to go over to the barrel, though. It's quite a drop. <laughs> Oh God, anyway, uh, before I get out of here, let me let you guys in on a little dating secret. Guy takes out a girl, and the next day he tells people, well, she was nice, but there was just no chemistry. What he really means to say is, you know, I bought her dinner, but she didn't blow me. <laughs> now, ladies, you can avoid this from happening by getting this little task out of the way on the first date. Really, think about it. At some point during the first date, I don't know, let's say there's a lull in the conversation, you administer head. <laughs> That whole awkward first kiss moment later in the evening is going to seem like nothing. <laughs> I know you like to wait what you think is a respectable amount of time before you do that. Let's say the third date. But by the third date, you can really start to like the guy. Isn't it better to find out on the first date if he's telling a Ken doll? <laughs> I know. If he's telling a Ken doll, it doesn't matter because why? Size doesn't matter. Even though Mr. Gould says size doesn't matter, only take guys who could use a hula hoop for a cock ring. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, that reminds me, I gotta get to the hula hoop store before they close. Right. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs>